it looks like this particular agent has been killing people for 5,000 years, four or 5,000 years in Western Eurasia, and in fact is killing like a scarily large fraction of the population. Like as a quantitative person, which I am, reading this literature, I think people are embarrassed by the implication. The implication is that a third, a quarter, a half of deaths in this entire period are from this. this and there, people are just, it's so unbelievable, so ridiculous that such a high proportion of people over such a long period of time are dying from this one agent that people don't even say it. They just publish one paper after the other, publishing more sequences, <laughs> and they just don't think about the implications of such a high rate of death. When the first large number of DNA sequences from people who lived five and six and 4,000 years ago from the, in the steppe north of the Black and Caspian Seas and in Europe were being published about in 2015, this group in Denmark led by S.K. Willerslev and Christian Christiansen and colleagues, sequent, looked at their DNA and they discovered in their sequence from the hundred or so humans they sequenced that there was also pathogen DNA. And in five to 10% of the random people they sequenced around four or 5,000 years ago, there was Yersinia pestis, which is the agent of the Black Death. But actually without the uh, without the plasmid that uh, contributes to bubonic plague that's required for flea rat transmission. So it must have been, for example, pneumonic plague, the aerosolized transmission or something. But 5 to 10% of uh, random deaths means that actually the percent of people who were dying was must have been even higher mm. because they weren't detecting everything that was there. So the implication seems to be this one agent that we happen to be able to detect is killing a very large fraction of people in Western Eurasia over this period. So what's the implication of that? One thing is that maybe it seems to be coming from steppe rodents, probably. And so maybe the people on the steppe are somewhat more, I mean, they're still dying of it, but the somewhat more protected of it. Then it spreads into farming Europe maybe 5,000 years ago, which is when we start to see it. And maybe this results in disorganization of the population, giving such high rate of death. And maybe it creates a type of situation that the Europeans encountered when they got to the Americas, where societies were disrupted. So in you know in the last few years we had COVID-19 it killed a half percent of the world population or something like that and it was so disruptive. So if this thing is killing a third of people or half yeah. of people, you know randomly randomly killing people with cultural knowledge, randomly yep. ripping into structures like in you know I don't know was it was it Montezuma died or or one of the or one of his parents you know resulting in civil wars and the Inca when the Europeans yeah. encountered them just disrupting the cultures that were there maybe this would have created a situation where there was disruption in the old ways of life and maybe combined with other things or even just by itself could have created an opportunity for people to move in from elsewhere even though they were not as densely spread because the big observation we haven't talked about and it's something that we as an ancient DNA community have been looking into again and again now and keep making progress on is that about 5,000 to 4,500 years ago in Europe, there's a radical transformation in the ancestry of Europeans. An example of this is what happens in Britain. So about 4,500 years ago, the farmers who are there, they arrived there 6,000 years ago, they build Stonehenge, 40, uh, the last big stones of Stonehenge go up 4,500 years ago, and then within 100 years, ago, uh, years 90% of them are gone. Wow. And they're replaced by migrants from the continent bearing prop majority ancestry from the steppe north of the Black and Caspian Seas. This is one place where we know what happened very well, but we see it all over Europe. We see it in Spain, we see it in Portugal, we see it in the Netherlands, we see it in Germany, we see it in Czechia, we see it in Italy, we see it in Switzerland, we see it everywhere. This wave of people from the East arrives and it displaces these successful, impressive, densely packed farmers uh, with new people who have this ancestry from the East who are not as focused on farming, although some of them are, as the people who came before. So a paper just came out a few weeks ago in Scandinavia uh, looking at these tombs from about 5,000 years ago of farmers who were just on the verge of count encountering people from the steppe, and a huge fraction of them have Black Death when they die. They're buried wow. in tombs, a normal, even higher than 5 or 10%. So this whole pedigree with many, many generations, so it's not all at the same time, just like the parents' generation generations a very large fraction, like well more than 10%, have Black Death and you know, have, have, have Yersinia infection. This is so crazy. So um, just for the audience, if you're keeping tally, this one, uh, one bacteria, Yersinia pestis, 
is responsible. I mean, we learned in grade school that it's responsible for killing a third of Europeans, um, more recently causing the Black Death, right? And then there's even theories that this was uh, this helped with the Industrial Revolution because it drove wages up in Britain, and because of higher wages, they had to make machines and da da da. The, the Robert Allen, the economist, has a theory about this. So potentially caused the Industrial Revolution. That one's more. Causes, tended to causes inflation. Yeah. So it ends. It ends. I mean, in in the the medieval one, create creates a lot of inflation and the serfs, as I understand it, were sort of on fixed wages. And so mm. they had to be paid more. It basically inflated out their sort of seniorial responsibilities. Yeah. So th th that's one of my things. The other is um, during the Bronze Age, it allows the steppe people basically to replace the existing hunter-gatherer or farmer population in Europe. Like literally all of Europe is uh, allows a population from the eastern steppes to... Uh, like replace the existing people who build the Stonehenge with the, doing other things in Europe. And the Kyle Harper's book talks about this where the plague of Justinian, I think the final one that killed off the empire was also Yersinia Festus. Definitely. That's, right. that's documented with genetics. So the fall of the Roman Empire, the entire, like twice the sort of, or at least once the, the replacement of the population in Europe. And so the second time, you know, basically like modernity happened afterwards. It's crazy, one disease, and potentially the new world as well in terms of, I don't know how many people, what percentage of the deaths in the new world were. It's estimated to be not the primary pathogen. Okay. But uh, who knows? And in any case, I mean, there's others too, right? So some of the other, the, some of the other plagues in the Roman Empire are definitely not Yersinia. So I mean, th th that's crazy that not only disease, but this one in particular has had this big a role in human history.